Okay, so for today, we're just gonna do a really quick breakdown of the pond. I had a few people asking me if I can go into a little more detail for the pond that I did for this Brazilian rainbow boa. And she actually peed in it last night, so it's a perfect opportunity for me to pull out some of the components and clean it and then walk through some of the uh, setup with you guys. So really cool, before I start, yesterday I fed her for the very first time in this enclosure. She hadn't eaten in about a month. I fed her yesterday, and some of you may have seen this on Instagram. Right after she finished eating, she went into the pond and she hung out in the pond, completely submerged, like right to the bottom, which is like five or six inches underwater for probably four or five, I went to bed, so it was at least five hours of time in the water, which was incredibly interesting. I've never seen her do this before, and uh, I hadn't even seen her interact with the pond before, so I didn't even really know if she knew it was there. But anyway, totally fascinating, and I'm guessing that might be something to do in the wild. I know anacondas do that as well, when after they eat a large meal, they'll go and hang out in the water. I think maybe it's to offset some of the weight off their organs or off their stomach and whatnot. Anyway, super fascinating, so again, that's another reason why you want to continuously try to strive to replicate nature because when you do your animals will behave in those ways that they're programmed to do in the wild and all of a sudden they'll do it at home in your enclosure so super cool so we're gonna break this uh, the pond down for right now and then I'll show you how it works okay so if you did watch the build for this enclosure here when I upgraded this enclosure you will have seen some of these aspects so the first thing I did is I'm just using a submergible pump which I'll show you in a second but I did install a button switch on it right here so I turn that off and the pump will turn off. You can see it will slowly stop draining out once the bulkhead catches up to the depth that it's at. So now that that's unplugged, we can start dismantling things. Okay, so now that the pump is off, I can open up this ball valve, which is right here, and that will start to drain the pond into the reservoir. And if you remember from the last video, I just used one of these water changers that's designed for an aquarium. This piece just hooks onto my sink and it creates a vacuum and will start drawing water out of this container. So now that most of the pond has been drained into this basin and most of the basin has been completely drained into the sink, there's still a tiny bit left. I have to dump that out by hand. I can now disconnect, disconnect the basin from the rest of the plumbing. So I'm just gonna pause the video really quick here to show you a diagram of the plumbing. This will make everything a lot more clear later on when we see the actual plumbing components in the video. So I'll show you exactly what I have here. So this big black rectangle is the enclosure. And then this thing here is the pond. It's about you know 90% full of water. And then it's sitting on top of the wooden stand. And then here is our reservoir underneath. So this little kind of grayish, cube here that's our water pump so you can see that's pumping water from the reservoir up this thin tube and dumping water into the pond and then these two things here so this top one and this bottom piece here those are aquarium bulkheads so those are just regular half inch aquarium bulkheads you can buy them off amazon i'll link all of that in the description below and of course i'll link the description or link the pump in the description as well that is just an 80 gallon per hour pump so I have a few different pictures here because I can't put all of the plumbing into one picture because then it just looks like a total rat's nest. So we're just gonna look at the overflow at the top here. So this is the overflow bulkhead. So as the water you know, dumps in from the pump, it fills up, eventually it'll fill up up to the level of the bulkhead and the water will flow down the tube back into the reservoir. So that's simply how that works. And of course the pump pumps it back. And then for the drain, which you'll see later on in this video. So here is how the drain functions. Now I've removed all the overflow plumbing just to make the image look a lot simpler look at now this red line here that's our ball valve that's almost exactly what it looks like so when it's closed and the pond and pump are running normally we have the pump pumping water up into the pond and of course it's overflowing back into the reservoir and the drain is blocking anything from flowing out these tubes so when I do want to change all of the water I open up the ball valve like this and all of the water will flow through this plumbing system into the reservoir and of course I have the water change system on this right side here which I don't have in the image and when I hook that up I can suck out all the water from the reservoir into the sink so it's as simple as that there's basically three different pipes there's the pipe for the actual water being pumped into the pond there's the pipes for the drain and then there's the pipe for the overhead system hopefully that makes more sense when we go through it a little bit later disconnect the basin from the rest of the plumbing so we'll start with the back drain the front one so last thing here is I just pull out the this is the pump hose pull that out of the enclosure and I can pull that through the stand just like that I know everything's black so it's hard to see but now the basin is completely disconnected from the rest of the plumbing and I can pull it right out. 
Okay, so here's the basin. This is the drain that the ball valve that drains the pond into the basin below. This is the overflow, which I'll show you guys in a second. Now, this is the pump that I was talking about. That's just a little 80 gallon per hour submersible pump with a little bit of airline hose, or this is actually hose from my misting system for my dig echo. So I can actually pull the pump right out of here and place it here. And I'm gonna go dump this in the sink and I'll be right back. Now I know everything is really black and hard to see, but the the drain that I have set up on this pond doesn't quite drain it 100%. It leaves about an inch of water. So I'm gonna use my siphon to completely drain. Then I'm gonna clean the inside, because again, there's some urates in there. She peed last night, and then we'll fill it back up. And again, this is not something I have to do every single time I wanna change water. It just happens to be the case that she actually peed in here. So it's a good opportunity for me to clean it out. I will probably do the main, the full clean like once a month or something. Okay, so now that the pond is completely empty and cleaned out, I cleaned it out with hydrogen peroxide and it is good to go quickly run through the plumbing on the side here to hopefully it makes sense for everybody so this is the overflow so this is a bulkhead on on this side on, on the pond side it's a bulkhead on this side it's a tube as the pond fills up it'll hit the hole here the bulkhead and it'll trickle down this tube back into the basin where it is slowly pumped back into the pond kind of making an endless loop and then down here is the ball valve and this is the drain so when I want to completely drain the pond to do a full change and a full clean like I'm doing now, then I need to open this up and it'll drain down to the basin. Now I need to close it because we're about to refill it. So I don't want water trickling through then or else I'll never be able to get the pond full, obviously. And we're good to go on this side. So the only thing that you're not seeing here is the is the actual filter hose that will go into here, but that needs to be placed back after the basin is back in place. So again, here's the basin and here is the pump. We're gonna place everything back where it's supposed to go. So the pump will go there and there's a little hole through the basin to feed the tube through. Lid goes back on and we can wedge it back into place. I can now feed the pump hose back through the stand and then through the hole in the enclosure so it can dump water back into the pond. So I'll just quickly reconnect the drain and the overflow. Okay, so the plumbing is all hooked up, so we will fill it up right away and turn it back on as the final step. But just a couple pieces of feedback that I received from this setup. The first was I could have easily just used a canister canister filter for the aquarium hobby. And uh, yes, I definitely could have done that. And honestly, if I do this again, I probably would just do that because it would be a lot easier. And then the second piece of advice that I got that's kind of similar to that is I could have a filter in this basin here that would help keep the water clean. Now, yes, I could, but I'm basically doing like 90% water changes in this entire system every two or three days, just like I changed the rest of my snake water. So the water is most of the time really fresh and I would never rely on a filter to keep the water clean because if she does poop or pee in it, I'm gonna be completely cleaning it out just like I did there. A filter is really just to manage waste from the animals and theoretically there should be no waste in this system at all because as soon as I notice waste, I'm gonna clean it. So I think, a canister filter would actually accomplish both those things much easier. So that's probably what I'll do in the future. So we can hook our water change port back up and we will fill the tub up and turn the pump on. So I know it is a little bit tough to see in here because everything's painted black, but that is the drain bulkhead and the overflow bulkhead is, can we see it? It's just behind that wood structure, so you can kind of see the bottom of it right there. It is tough to see, but that's the overflow. So we're gonna turn the pond on now. So again, it's just this button here. So that is pretty much it when it comes to the plumbing of this pond system. It's pretty straightforward and something that you could probably do yourself. It'll probably take about 30 minutes for that little pump to actually refill the pond, but it will eventually get there. And again, if you want to use an aquarium canister filter instead, it would cost you a lot more money than this. This is only a couple of bucks, obviously with the bin and a few little bits of plumbing and whatnot, but a canister filter would be a lot easier and then you could have a little bit of filtration with it. Again, this is not the video that goes into the full details of how I do, how I actually built this pond. So if you wanna know the details of that, then definitely go back into the video of the Brazilian Rainbow Boat Enclosure video. I'll put that in the description. You can see how I constructed this. This was really just going after the plumbing, but I will say it was absolutely fantastic seeing her use it, especially in a way that I never would have guessed. I would never have guessed that she'd jump into the pond right after eating, so that was really cool to see. I'm guessing that's probably what they do in the wild, so that was really cool. I will say I absolutely hate working with these 16 inch tall enclosures and that might be a warning for you. I would never buy one of these again. It just gives you such little headroom to work. An idea that I just had is it would probably be cool if I actually cut a hole in the floor and, and set the pond down so it's actually almost at the ground level. That is for another day, but that would be really cool. So anyway, 
I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it cleared up some of the plumbing questions that some of you had with the pond. And if you do have any questions, again, put them in the comments and I will see you in the next video.